Some animals are big. Some are very big. You've heard of most of them, but did you know that there are some huge animals you haven't heard of? That may sound crazy. If an animal is big, how can it avoid detection? But it's true, these are giant animals you didn't know existed. Number 15. Sarcosicus Imperator Sarcosicus Imperator is an extinct crocodiliform genus and distant cousin of modern crocodilians that existed in what is now Africa and South America during the early Cretaceous period. From the late Hot Rivian to the early Albion, 133 to 112 million years ago, it was one of the world's largest crocodile line reptiles, reaching a maximum size of 31 feet. It is known from two species, S. Imperator from the early Albion Alaraz formation of Niger, and S. Hardy from the late Hot Rivian of northern Brazil. Additional material has been found in Morocco and Tunisia, as well as Libya and Mali. The earliest bones were discovered in the Sahara during numerous trips headed by French paleontologist Albert Félix de Lamparant between 1946 and 1959. The skull, vertebrae, teeth, and scutes were among the bones discovered. The French CEA discovered an almost complete skull in Niger in 1964, but it wasn't until 1997 and 2000 that most of its anatomy was discovered. When an expedition led by American paleontologist Paul Sorino discovered six new species, including one with about half the skeleton and most of the spine intact. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. Indricotherium Paraceratherium was a kind of rhinoceros with no horns that existed between 34 and 23 million years ago in Eurasia. We don't have a complete fossil of the Paraceratherium, but based on the bits we do have, we may estimate that it was one of the biggest terrestrial animals ever. Standing up to 16 feet tall and 24 feet long, with a single set of incisors in each jaw, this large animal, like its contemporary counterparts, would be Peel the leaves off trees. It was dark gray in hue and had a muscular torso with a thick neck and limbs like columns. Its exact weight is unclear, although it may have weighed up to 20 tons. Due to its huge size and strength, it would have had few predators and enjoyed a life comparable to current rhinos and elephants. Imagine attempting to track down one of them for your dinner. The only creatures it had to be afraid of were presumably other Paraceratheriums. Number 13. Mammoth a mammoth is any extinct elephanted species from the genus Mammothus, which is one of the numerous genera that make up the proboscidean order of trunked mammals. Long curved tusks and, in the case of northern species, a coating of long hair were characteristic features of mammoths. They existed in Africa, Europe, Asia, and North America from the Pliocene period through the Holocene epoch. They belonged to the Elephantidae family, which includes the two genera of contemporary elephants and their predecessors. Living Asian elephants are more closely linked to mammoths than African elephants. The early mammothus species, the South African mammoth, emerged approximately 5 million years ago in what is now southern and eastern Africa during the early Pliocene. These mammoths' descendants migrated north and multiplied into several new species, eventually spanning much of Eurasia before spreading into the Americas at least 600,000 years ago. The woolly mammoth was the final species to emerge around 400,000 years ago in East Asia, with some surviving on Russia's Wrangel Island and the Arctic Ocean until as late as 3,700 to 4,000 years ago, when the Great Pyramid of Egypt was being built. Number 12. Elasmotherium 
Elasmotherium is a big rhinoceros genus that was confined to Eurasia from the late Pliocene to the Pleistocene, surviving from 2.6 ma until at least 39,000 years ago in the late Pleistocene. A more recent date of 26,000 BP is regarded as less trustworthy. It was the last surviving member of the Elasmotherinae family of rhinoceroses, which split from the current rhinoceros ancestors at least 35 5 million years ago, according to fossils, and about 47.4 million years ago, according to molecular clocks. Elasmotherium is frequently recreated as a woolly mammal based on the wooliness of contemporary megafauna like mammoths and the woolly rhino. It is, however, occasionally represented as bare-skinned, as modern rhinos are. In 1948, Russian paleontologist Valentin Teryov proposed that Elasmotherium was semi-aquatic with a dome-like horn and resembled a hippo because it had four toes like a wetland taper instead of three toes found in other rhinos. However, Elasmotherium has since been shown to have only three functional toes and Teryev's reconstruction has received little scientific attention. Number 11. Basilosaurus Basilosaurus was a kind of whale that went extinct. It existed between 40 and 34 million years ago, and its elongated serpent-like shape, which could exceed 60 feet in length, is easily recognized. Basilosaurus had a number of distinguishing features. These features included vestigial but significantly shortened hind limbs, which were likely not functional for propelling the animal but could have been used as a guide during mating, extremely elongated vertebrae akin to snakes and a skeletal architecture that indicated it moved in an eel-like manner. Basilosaurus, unlike current whales and dolphins, lacked the melon organ that modern cetaceans utilize for echolocation, making it unlikely that it could dive deep. Basilosaurus fossils were first discovered in Louisiana, but more have subsequently been unearthed in Egypt and Pakistan in addition to the United States. The story of the Basilosaurus's discovery is interesting. During the 19th century, the animal's fossils were supposedly abundant in Alabama and Louisiana, to the point that residents used the bones to make furniture. On the other hand, several fossils were transported to the American Philosophical Society to be examined by Dr. Dr. Richard Harlan. Harlan examined the fossils and determined that they were reptiles, naming the species Basilosaurus, which in Greek means king lizard or king reptile. Sir Richard Owen then examined further samples and determined that the creature was, in fact, a mammal. Number 10. Andrew Sarkis Andrew Sarkis lived in Asia between 45 million and 36 million years ago, during the late Eocene epoch in the Paleogene period, and remains have been unearthed in Mongolia. Andrew Sarkis belonged to the Mesonicids, a group of hooved carnivores related to even toed undulates and cetaceans that became extinct. So far, just the animal's skull and a few other bones have been unearthed, so not all elements of its existence have been disclosed. For example, we don't know if it was a predator or a scavenger. According to mythology, it had a large head, a long snout with big fangs, including strong cutting teeth and flat cheek teeth that could have crushed bones, a long body, a long tail, and small legs with hoof toes, as well as a longer body, a long tail, and short legs with hoof toes. Because no complete specimen of Andrew Sarchis has yet been unearthed, the creature's size remains a source of debate. It was around 12 feet long from head to pelvis, not including the tail, and stood roughly six feet off the ground at its shoulders. Its weight was more likely between 400 and 1,000 pounds, although exactly where it fell within that range remains a mystery. But one thing is certain, it was one of the world's largest mammalian land carnivores. Number 9. Diprotodon Diprotodon optatum, the world's biggest marsupial and the last of the herbivorous diprotodontids, lived in the Pleistocene of Australia. Diprotodon was the first Australian fossil animal to be identified and is one of the most well-known megafauna. When the first indigenous people arrived in Australia, it was ubiquitous, coexisting with them for thousands of years before going extinct approximately 25,000 years ago. Diprotodon did not travel in huge herds as is 
infrequently represented, large groups of marsupials are uncommon. Smaller family groupings were likely lured en masse to the dwindling waterhole at Lake Calabana, as seen by the huge number of people discovered there. The exact cause of Diprotodon's extinction is unknown. Diprotodon appears to have coexisted with Aboriginal people for about 20,000 years, indicating that it was not extinct when humans arrived. Human action may have had an impact, either through habitat alteration or a gradual decline in population due to selective juvenile killing. Because Aboriginal people lacked large game weaponry, they were unlikely to hunt adult Diprotodon. Climate change might have had a role as well. Droughts were far more severe than today's in Australia during the Pleistocene, and most of interior Australia was barren, uninhabitable, and waterless. Number 8. Arctotherium Arctotherium is a genus of extinct South American short-faced bears belonging to the Ursidae family that lived from the late Pliocene to the end of the Pleistocene. Following the construction of the Isthmus of Panama, their ancestors moved from North America to South America during the Great American Interchange. They were endemic to South America and lived between 2 to 0.01 million years ago, lasting around 1.99 million years. The North American short-faced bears of the genus Arctodus were their closest relatives. The spectacled bear is the closest living cousin. Arctotherium was the world's biggest bear at the time. It possessed a more strong physique with the same linear dimensions of Arctodus simus, and it was also considerably more solidly built. This species representatives grew to be 13 feet tall and weighed over 2,200 kilograms, seven different measurements of animal bones were used to make the estimations. During the Pleistocene, Arctotherium and Gustadens existed on the Argentine plains. It was formerly the world's most powerful predator. It looked to be omnivorous, although its diet consisted primarily of big herbivores. It may face competition from saber-toothed cats, who were also at the top of the food chain. The closest surviving cousin of A. Angustidens is the spectacled bear, which is much, much smaller than its distant progenitor. Number 7. Glyptodon Glyptodon was a creature that looked a lot like an armadillo of today. In reality, armadillos are the smaller cousins of this huge creature, which was roughly the same size and weight as a Volkswagen Beetle. They existed during the Pleistocene epoch and were strongly armored since they had to contend with some fierce predators at the time. Because of their unique teeth, the name Glyptodon means carved tooth in Greek. One aspect of this species that has piqued scientists' curiosity is that it resembles a turtle despite the fact that they are unrelated, providing proof for the notion that creatures may develop highly similar shapes even if they are not related. The godfather of evolution, Charles Darwin, is thought to have discovered the first remains of this monster. He uncovered a femur and part of a tail, but didn't realize it was a new species at the time, mistaking it for a fragment of a previously identified identified creature, the gigantic ground sloth. It turned out to be a whole new species, one that experts are still debating 200 years after its discovery. Number 6. Megatherium now it's time to look at Megatherium americanum, also known as the giant ground sloth. In reality, its Greek name simply means great beast, and there's nothing wrong with that description of this terrifying beast. This is one of the largest land animals ever. Only elephants and the extinct gigantic rhino compare in size. The gigantic ground sloth was originally spotted in 1788 near Argentina's Lujan River. It was brought back to Spain, where it was analyzed by paleontologist George Cuvier, who determined that it was a type of sloth. 
This species became extinct 12,000 years ago during the Quaternary Extinction Event, which resulted in the loss of the bulk of big animals in the Americas, and experts are still arguing why this occurred. However, one find is of a huge ground sloth butcher, indicating that people were slaughtering and eating them, maybe to the point of extinction, but climate change could also be a factor. On a 4-ton, 20-foot animal, you could definitely feed well, because the giant ground sloth was a herbivore that ate yuccas, agaves, and grasses, they didn't have to worry about being hunted down. A swipe from that massive muscular tail, on the other hand, would be game over for anyone. Number 5. Gigantopithecus Gigantopithecus is an ape species that did not survive to contemporary times, which is something we should all be thankful for. This is an ape species you don't want to encounter if you've ever had nightmares about King Kong. Ralph von Koenigswald was the first to identify the gigantic ape, which existed in southern China during the early to middle Pleistocene. More remains were discovered 20 years later, and a clearer image of our gigantic cousin began to emerge. Gigantopithecus was one assumed to be a hominin, which is the human line that includes chimps, but it is now regarded to be a cousin of the contemporary orangutan. Although it was a herbivore, this massive gorilla-like primate weighed approximately 660 pounds. It died out approximately 300,000 years ago, most likely as a result of climate change, but also potentially as a result of early human interactions. Since then, Gigantopithecus has been proposed as the basis of many wild stories about the Yeti and Bigfoot, and it has become one of the most fiercely debated issues in cryptozoology when you consider that some estimates place the huge ape's height at 12 feet. This is hardly unexpected. Number 4. Entelodonts any member of the extinct taxonomic family, Entelodontidae, is known as an entelodont. Hell pigs are the common name for these huge primitive creatures. They are, however, not linked to contemporary pigs. Rather, they are more closely connected to hippos and whales in the evolutionary trees. The Entelodontidae family originated in Mongolia and then expanded throughout Asia, Europe, and North America. Between 19 million years and 16 million years ago, they went extinct. Hell pigs in North America tended to prefer floodplains as their preferred habitat. Hell pigs of various species also loved the woods. Even the tiniest hell pigs grew to be pretty huge. The tiniest hell pigs weighed in at approximately 330 pounds, 50 kilograms, while the biggest weighed in at around 2,000 pounds, 900 kg. Many hell pigs have enormous heads in comparison to their size. The Dinohyus is another example. Its head account for 35 to 45 percent of its whole length. The front teeth were big and sharp, allowing them to tear flesh from bone with ease. The back teeth of the crusher were flat, which was ideal for crushing plant material. The hell pig's diet most likely included fruits, leaves, and seeds, as well as other mammals and eggs. Number 3. Titanoboa According to a recent finding published in the journal Nature, the world's largest snake, as long as a school bus and as heavy as a compact vehicle, dominated tropical ecosystems barely six million years after the feared Tyrannosaurus rex died. An international team of scientists discovered partial bones of the gigantic boa constrictor-like snake Titanoboa cerojonensis in Colombia, and they are currently on display at the Florida Museum of natural history. According to Florida Museum vertebrae paleontologist Jonathan Block, the snake was 42 to 45 feet long based on the diameter of the preserved vertebrae. That would make the serpent as long as the T-Rex, Sue, on display at the Field Museum in Chicago. The snake that tried to eat Jennifer Lopez in the film Anaconda was not quite as large as the one they discovered. That is really insane. This massive snake snake was found in 2009 by a team led by American Block. The enormous snake gained even more notoriety when a full-scale replica of a Titanoboa was displayed in Grand Central Terminal in New York City as part of a Smithsonian promotion. Number 2. Terror Birds 
Terror birds are, as you might expect, scary. From around 62 million years ago until around 1.8 million years ago, these enormous flightless birds lived. Although they originated in South America, they are the only large South American predator known to have crossed the Panama Canal and North America during the period when the two continents were linked by the Panama Canal. People in North America were probably not pleased to see them all arrive because they could grow to reach 10 feet tall, they had an 18 inch long beak like an eagle's, which curved into a razor sharp hook. They were very nimble and swift, reaching speeds of up to 30 miles per hour. They lacked the biting force to take on large prey, thus, they likely focused on smaller animals like rabbits that could be easily killed and consumed. But some experts disagree, citing the Smilodon and the Great White Shark as examples of top predators with weak bite forces. It's possible that it used its beak as a knife to cut at the necks of large creatures before finishing them off with its enormous talons. This is very scary. Number 1. T-Rex so how terrifying was the most terrifying dinosaur? As we'll see, it's rather frightening. Tyrannosaurus rex, whose Latin name means Terrible Lizard King, is the most well-known dinosaur of all time. This is an appropriate depiction of an all-powerful predator, even if it does have extremely tiny arms. Don't worry about the limbs if you run into this 40-foot-long, 13-foot-tall bipedal dinosaur. The massive head filled with sharp teeth will be the most dangerous part. Art. Despite the fact that other theropods grew to be much larger than T. rex, none of them possessed the bite force of this dinosaur, which is believed to be the most powerful bite ever. T. rex was considered to be an apex predator capable of taking down the greatest prey, but other experts believe it was a scavenger feasting on the massive remains of plant-eating dinosaurs. We also have a lot of evidence of this dinosaur, including most complete bones, soft tissue, and proteins indicating that this is one dinosaur we might be able to bring back to life one day, but would we be mad enough to want to? Which of these giants was your favorite? What's the biggest animal you've ever seen? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!